Let's bring in our panel, former Border Patrol agent Rosemary Pepperdine, who worked in the Tucson, Arizona sector for 25 years, and National Border Patrol Council President Brandon Judge. Uh, Rosemary, I wanted to hear a little bit about your decision to leave the Border Patrol. I know that uh, I've read that it was a lifelong calling for you, that you loved the job, but that it had changed. Yes, the last year, uh, for 25 years, I've loved the job. I show up every day. I love what I was doing, um, enforcing the law, what I was sworn to do. And the last year has really changed. In the last year, I was more disgruntled, so I can understand those videos coming out. I was not happy going to work. Um, we swore an oath to protect the border or to enforce the immigration laws. And it doesn't matter if there's a Republican or a Democrat in office, we should be doing that. And we haven't been doing that. And I, unlike others, had the ability to leave, and I decided to return in December. Uh, I just want to ask you another question, Rosemary, before I get to Brandon. In your experience, in 25 years, have you ever seen a situation like this? No, I haven't. I have not seen the morale this bad. And it's not just at my station or my sector. It was throughout the Border Patrol, everywhere. You saw... Um, people who just weren't happy with what was going on. I mean, we're risking our lives every day, catching human smugglers, drug smugglers, and for what, so they can be released? It was just a slap in the face to us. Brandon, I, was, I understand. I'll get right back to you, Rosemary. Brandon, you've been saying this to us on air for, for a while now, but it, does it feel like it's reaching some sort of a fever pitch? I, I think it's good that the secretary went down to the border to talk to them or at least listen. But when he goes back to Washington, it doesn't seem like anything changes. And we're now, you know, in the 13th month of this presidency, soon to be 14th. And nothing is going to change. If you look right now, stationwide, nationwide, there is so much anger, so much frustration. You can go to any Border Patrol station and you can actually feel the tension. Um, every single time a U.S. citizen overdoses, we feel it. Every single time a U.S. citizen is harmed by an illegal border crosser, we feel it. We want to protect the American public, but our hands are tied. And it's tied because of political aspirations. And frankly, it's tied because of career aspirations of, of career employees that all they want to do is move up. That's wrong. We want to protect the American public, but right now we just can't do it. Rosemary, how dangerous is the situation that we would face if you had even more of the agents get, take a make a decision like you've done to leave the Border Patrol, even though you love the job, but it's just not a job you feel like you can do um, and you know, hold, look yourself in the mirror at night, knowing that you aren't allowed to do what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I think um, it's gonna be very dangerous because we're already short. We're thousands of agents short. So we definitely, the more people that are leaving, we're not replacing those agents that are leaving. So your manpower is dwindled to nothing. And you have agents who are covering miles and miles of border by themselves. And this wasn't happening you know, four years ago. And I don't want to make it political, but under Trump, at least he was willing to reach out and speak to us and find out what we needed and the resource that we were needing and whatever we needed to do our job easier. And now we're not getting anything. It's like they're more worried about the Ukrainian border than they are about our own southern border. Rosemary, what is your greatest fear right now as the border is, continues to be open like this? I worry for the fellow agents I worked with. You know, I worry about them not only um, their safety in the field, but mentally, mm. you know, because it's a tough job, you know, and right now not having the support of your upper management, including, including Chief Ortiz and higher ups in the administration, it makes it very difficult. Well, Brandon, thank you for being here with Rosemarie. We're gonna have to leave it there, but we'll have you both back. Thank you, and Rosemary, um, congratulations on making a very tough decision. Uh, I'm sure that they are glad to have you still as a friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dana.